This is the Pythonic Accountant, and today we're going to play around a little bit with the abilities of GPT-4's code interpreter. Um, instead of uploading data in this one, I'm going to just ask it to try to do something for me. So just for fun, let's do some audit work here. So I'm going to say you are going to act as a very good data analytics auditor. Teach me how you could use data analytics and data visualization to perform some audit procedures of an accounts payable listing. Let's just see what it comes up with. So I'm hoping it will create a mock data set. So first it's probably gonna tell me some of the steps you could or should perform, which is great. Then I'm hoping it'll actually create some data and give examples of each of these. That would be great. And these definitely seem like good procedures to perform. Yes. Feel free your own mock data sets to demonstrate with. <laughs> this is so cool. So I could really imagine this being useful as like a tutor even, or as sort of a co-pilot in, you know, working with. So let's see what it does. So it's gonna do these auto procedures. Well, okay. It's telling us what it's gonna do. Let's do step two, analytical procedures. So we're gonna calculate some ratios and statistics such as total average payment amount for each supplier. Oh, <laughs> so it's, it's inside here. Okay, cool, so it did that. Three trend analysis, awesome, wow. Monthly payments over time. Uh, step four, duplicate analysis. Did not find any duplicates. That means there are no instances where the same amount was paid to the same supplier on the same day. Now we're gonna do Benford's analysis. This one will be interesting. Let's see what it comes up with. Ah. So Benford's law indicates it should fall within this distribution, but did not fall within that. Of course, this is a mock data set, so that may be part of the reason why. Oh, that's funny. So the commentary says the payment amount seems to follow Benford's law closely, but that's not actually what happened. So I'm gonna give it feedback and say, hey, your comment about Benford's law doesn't track. So let's see, data. what are they doing with data classification? We'll count the number of payments by cost center, okay? It's not really providing any insights here. It's doing like the first step of the analysis, but that's it. And now it's saying it's doing some testing. <laughs> what are you doing here? It doesn't make any sense. That's funny. Not bad. You said the Benford's Law. What do they say here? The Benford's Law seemed to track. Uh, but I'll say, but it looked like the actual distribution was different. Can you do an analysis within Python to compare actual against? Part of my misspelling. It should hopefully pick up on what I was trying to say. So now it's going to actually perform the test. So that's great because it actually can't see. Like it's going to create these visuals, but GPT-4 is not able to actually view the visualizations itself. And so, using Python to compare a more actual mathematical calculation that is going to get us a more accurate result. So it says, it seems the payment amounts conform to Benford's law. 
That's, I don't believe that though. Looking at the visual, it doesn't make sense. Well, okay, we'll pass on this one. Yeah, that definitely doesn't track. Um, let's question its next one, the uh, data classification. What should we do with the data classification analysis? purpose was to identify if there are any cost centers with unusually high or low volumes. They seem to be evenly distributed. So I guess they're saying there's really nothing else you can really do here because there was a pretty even distribution. Okay. Well, this is fairly kind of mundane. Nothing too exciting here. Um, all right. Well, this, this was um, interesting. I would say there's probably a lot more we could do. So we'll continue doing our analysis of ways that we can use GPT code interpreter for accounting purposes. But so far, not super impressed with this use case. Again, maybe because we had to create mock data versus using real data. So for the next one, let's see if we can find some real-ish data to give to it and maybe have it do a little bit better procedures. Maybe we'll try some other accounting areas too, like financial reporting. Until next time, see you guys in the next one.